Fall is a beautiful season here at Old Woman Creek. From the changing leaf colors on the sassafras trees to the late blooming plants such as the goldenrod and asters, visitors can enjoy the estuary and its surrounding habitats. But fall is also a busy season for many of the habitants that live at Old Woman Creek. When temperatures drastically drop and weather conditions change, plants and animals respond by preparing for winter in several ways. When summer transitions into fall, days become shorter and there is less sunlight. This triggers plants to start preparing for dormancy. Dormancy is a temporary period where plants stop producing metabolic activities such as growth and water uptake throughout the winter months. Changes in leaf color is the most obvious change to visitors as the chlorophyll stops creating photosynthetic activity and is converted into other pigments such as xanthophylls, carotenoids, and anthocyanins. Other changes visitors may notice are an overabundance of seeds and nuts. This is known as a mass seeding, and this event among plants offers two advantages. The first advantage allows animals to feed as much as they can in preparation for winter. The second advantage increases the chance for the plant's seed or nut to overwinter in the snow and germinate in the spring. Some plants may produce berries, which are equally important food sources for many animals. The flesh portion of the berry provides an animal energy and nutrients while the seed within the berry does not get digested. Instead, it moves through the digestive tract and eventually defecated. This randomly disperses the seed to be preserved throughout the winter and germinate in the spring. Fall also signals birds to prepare for migration and there are several reasons for birds to migrate. During the winter months, food sources are reduced. Plants, insects, seeds, and nuts will not be as available in the winter compared to spring, summer, and fall. Temperature also influences birds to move to a warmer climate since many birds cannot tolerate the cold. Another reason to move to a warmer climate is to raise young. However, some birds do migrate here for winter. Dark-eyed juncos, for instance, migrate from Canada to winter in Ohio and other Midwestern states. Birds are constantly foraging and eating in preparation. Birds have what are called fat reserves, and they can gain between 40 to 60 percent of their normal body weight in fat. This extra fat is considered fuel, as some birds may fly for hours, while others will fly for days to reach their destinations. Fat reserves are found on a featherless region along the keel. This region is called a brood patch. When a bird is ready to migrate, the fat reserves are often dark red and look plump. During non-migrating periods, fat reserves are less prominent. The estuary plays an important role for migrating waterfowl and other aquatic birds. Used as a resting place, the estuary provides an abundance of food which allows the birds to gain their energy and fat again to continue their journey. Common estuary birds visitors may see include herons, egrets, ducks, geese, grebes, and cormorants. Some birds stay all year round and similarly forage and eat to build up their fat reserves. However, many of the overwintering species do something a bit different. Instead of eating their food right away, they will hide it somewhere to eat later. This is called caching. Caching provides birds extra food sources when other food is limited, and some birds can cache as many as 100,000 food items. Caching birds have also developed a good spatial memory to find most of their food caches. Winter can be a harsh season as it gets colder and food becomes scarce but mammals native to Ohio have adapted in several ways to survive winter. Hibernation is one of the most familiar methods to help mammals survive winter. Hibernation is the ability to lower heart and breathing rates to conserve energy as they sleep through the winter months. A groundhog or woodchuck, for instance, will hibernate for about five months. This animal can lower its body temperature to half and lower its heart rate from 80 beats per minute to 4 beats. 
Similar to birds, mammals consume as much food as possible in the fall and sometimes cache their food. Mammals will also take the time to prepare a den to sleep in. A den can be a burrowed hole, tree cavity, log, or a nest. Mammals may use materials such as leaves, twigs, or fur to make their bedding. Usually by the first snowfall, mammals take refuge in the prepared dens and start their hibernation. Other mammals, such as bats, skip making a den and instead find cave systems or crevices to roost within large colonies throughout the winter. Some mammals do not fully hibernate and may wake up several times feeding on potential caches they may have stored in the refuge. If temperatures are warm enough, some may venture outside to find food and return later to continue sleeping. Other mammals are active throughout winter and quickly adapt. In fall, some mammals will start to shed their summer fur coats and grow a thick winter coat to help keep them warm. Some mammals may even shed into a different color to help blend within their surroundings. Least weasels will have a red-brownish coat with a white underbelly in the summer and will shed into an all-white fur coat. Mammals can also change their diets. Herbivores that eat a lot of leafy greens in the summer will eat twigs, bark, and branches in the winter. Another coping method some mammals do is to form groups. White-tailed deer, for example, will group or yard up to conserve energy, stay warm, feel secure, and share limited food sources. There are a few mammals that live in the estuary that also do not hibernate, but are not easily seen throughout winter. Muskrats and beavers depend on water environments and create partially submerged dens to stay out of the snowy weather. Muskrats will use leaf or grass-like vegetation to carefully weave into a den, and these can be seen throughout most of the estuary. Beavers, on the other hand, will create lodges out of tree material and mud. Both species will occasionally venture into the water column to find more food or material to restore their shelters. Old Woman Creek is home to many reptiles and amphibians. They are active all summer and can be seen slithering, hopping, or swimming throughout the estuary and property. As soon as the weather conditions get colder, these animals prepare for hibernation. Rosie and Frankie, our two Midland Painted Turtles that live at Old Woman Creek's Visitor Center, like to sit in the sunniest spots possible during the summer. This is called basking and allows the turtles to regulate their body temperature and metabolic processes. But when it gets colder, so does the water which tells the turtles winter is getting close. Turtles will start to burrow in the mud at the bottom of the estuary where they will hibernate. As hibernation sets in, a turtle's body temperature will closely match the water temperature and slow down its metabolic activity. Turtles can reduce their metabolic processes by 99% and can survive without food or oxygen up to 100 days. However, not all turtles live in the water. Kaha and Karo, our eastern box turtles that are native to the woodlands of Ohio, prefer loose forest soil to burrow and hibernate in. Similarly to aquatic turtles, their body temperature will adjust to the soil and reduce their metabolic activity where they will be dormant. Most aquatic frogs will also hibernate underwater, but not quite the same as turtles. Frogs will choose to hibernate above the mud because they need oxygen and can absorb it through their skin. Colder temperatures create oxygen-rich water as the water becomes dense along the bottom of the estuary, making it a perfect environment for aquatic frogs to hibernate in. Some terrestrial toads or frogs may not hibernate in the water. Instead, they will either burrow into the soil, leaf litter, tree crevice, cavity, or a log. Few frog species will emerge out of hibernation in early or mid-spring, with ice and snow still prevalent on the ground. Salamanders are another inhabitant commonly found along the coves of the estuary that may temporarily hibernate under log coverage or leaf litter. When temperatures rise in late winter, some salamanders, such as the northern ravine salamander, may start to emerge out of their hibernation to lay eggs. Snakes will also hibernate. Eastern fox snakes, such as Rumpel, another occupant that lives at the visitor center, will take advantage of an already made burrow since snakes are not always capable of making their own winter den. For instance, woodchucks that make their burrow for hibernation will create tunnels throughout their den where snakes and other hibernating animals will take refuge.
Some other snakes, such as the common garter snake, may also decide to hibernate in large groups within mammal burrows. By coiling in these groups, they can stay warm below the ground. Visitors will notice a large array of insects and non-insects during the summer and early fall months. But as it gets colder, they are less noticeable and they typically have three options before winter. The first option is to migrate. Like birds, migration is one way to avoid the cold, find more available food sources, and to lay eggs. Monarch butterflies are one of several butterflies that travel south to the Sierra Madre Mountains in Mexico as they cannot survive the cold winters in their pupa stage. Another migratory insect visitors might see at Oldham Creek are dragonflies. It's known that only 16 out of 326 species migrate within North America and that dragonfly migrations occur on all continents except Antarctica. However, migration patterns and cues for this group of insects are poorly understood compared to the monarch butterfly. The second option is to lay eggs and die afterwards. Lots of insects and non-insects have short lifespans and their goal is to create a new generation for the following year. Grasshoppers and katydids, for example, will deposit their eggs below the soil or at the base of vegetation. This allows the eggs to be protected from the harsh winter conditions. If the eggs survive, the larvae will hatch in the spring or early summer. The third option is to hibernate throughout the winter and emerge in the spring. Wasps, centipedes, isopods, spiders, beetles, ants, and many more will take refuge either below ground, in a nest, or a crevice. Like reptiles and amphibians, insects and non-insects need warm, humid conditions to actively move. As it gets colder, they slow their metabolism down and become dormant. Fish are another occupant at Old Woman Creek that visitors might see while kayaking on the estuary. Fish are very active during the summer due to the abundance of food sources, warm waters, and nesting sites to lay their eggs. But as weather changes and water temperature drops, fish have several adaptions and options to survive winter. Changing seasons cause water temperatures to fluctuate within the estuary and Lake Erie. In general, these bodies of water will develop three thermal layers in the summer. The epilimnon is the surface of water where the sun warms it up, making it the warmest layer. The thermocline is below the epilimnon and is much cooler. Past the thermocline is the hypolimnion, the coolest and darkest region of the estuary and lake. When summer transitions into fall, these thermal layers dissipate as cooler winds rotate the water column. This is called a turnover. By winter, ice eventually forms and insulates the water, keeping the water at about 4 degrees Celsius or 39 degrees Fahrenheit. When spring arrives, another turnover will occur, recreating these thermal layers as summer approaches. The estuary, however, has several features that differs from the lake which can affect the fish differently in winter. The mouth of the estuary has been known to stay open for longer periods in winter. Fish, which can be separated into two categories, warm water fish and cold water fish, may decide to enter or exit the estuary based on their temperature preference. For instance, the estuary may ice over completely, which keeps the estuary insulated, while the lake may partially ice over, exposing the water column to the cold air. On the other hand, the estuary is shallower compared to Lake Erie. If ice doesn't completely form on the estuary, fish needing warmer water may decide to head to the lake where temperatures stay consistently the same at greater depths. Ice and access to the lake provides another factor that's important for fish survival. Water is densest at 4 degrees Celsius, which makes the deeper depths of the estuary and the lake oxygen rich. Typically, in smaller bodies of water, such as a pond that experiences long periods of ice coverage, oxygen slowly depletes. This is because when there's no ice coverage, the air can replenish oxygen into the water. Fish can adapt by absorbing oxygen through their skin in addition to absorbing with their gills. Luckily, oxygen levels in the estuary are highest during winter due to the accessibility to the lake and short periods of ice coverage. The estuary may also provide a resting area for fish in the winter. As the turnover begins, fish adapt to these temperature changes by slowing down. This means reducing their body temperature, metabolic, heart, and breathing rates. 
With little to no current in the water, fish can minimize their energy expenditure and only use it when necessary, like eating. Fish also don't freeze in the winter. That's because they have polyunsaturated fats, commonly known as omega-3s, within their cells that act as an antifreeze mechanism. This makes their cell membranes more elastic to withstand colder temperatures. Winter at Old Woman Creek can be a dazzling winter wonderland. While many of the inhabitants have either migrated or are in hibernation, visitors can still appreciate the beauty of the landscapes and the estuary while watching for other wildlife that don't hibernate. In the description of this video, visitors that are interested to learn more about Ohio's wildlife and plants can click on the Species Guide link to conduct a quick search, or click on the Wildlife Field Guides link to get access to free downloadable booklets. We hope you enjoyed watching this video and learned a few new things about how plants and animals prepare for winter. Our hiking trails are open from sunup to sundown and encourage visitors to explore Old Woman Creek's natural treasures. Thank you for watching.